G'day! Welcome to another Curriculum Burst. This time let's do a counting problem from the Grade 8 exam. It goes as follows. In a room, two-fifths of all the people are wearing gloves, doesn't happen that much very often, and three-quarters of the people are wearing hats. What is the minimum number of people in the room wearing both a hat and gloves? Alright, so there's some people in this room, we don't know how many. But two-fifths are wearing gloves. Let me write that down. So I'll just say gloves and then two-fifths of kind of like scratch work. And hats, what's that, three-quarters of those people? Three-quarters of the people are wearing hats. I just don't know the actual number of people. Uh, what is the minimal number of people in the room wearing both hat and gloves? All right, so I don't know the number of people in the room, and the question is about the minimal number of people in the room that are doing both this. Oh, gosh, how am I going to approach this one? Um, first of all, I've got two-fifths of the people and three-quarters of the people in the room, uh, people wearing gloves and or hats. So I guess the people, number of people in the room have to be such that whatever that number is, two-fifths is a whole number, and three-quarters of it is also a whole number. So I guess I need the number of people in the room to be some multiple of five, so I can work out two-fifths of it, and some multiple of four, so I can work out three-quarters of it. So the number of people in the room has to be some multiple of five and four. All right, now, what am I doing here? It's about the minimal number of people in the room with some property. So that's suggesting strategy number 10 to me, which is go to extremes. This time we want to go to the minimums. All right, so what's the minimal number of people that could be in the room in total? It has to be a multiple of five and a multiple of four. I think the smallest number of people in the room I could be dealing with is 20 people. So I'm just going to go with that. Since so I'm looking for the minimal number of people in the room doing both hats and gloves, I'm going to go with 20 people in the room. If that's wrong, maybe the answer is the next multiple of both 4 and 5. I guess that's what? 40. I can keep going. I'll start there, see what happens. All right. What was the question again? Two-fifths of people in the room are wearing gloves. So two-fifths of 20, I believe, is eight people are wearing gloves in the scenario. And three-quarters are wearing hats. That's 15. And that means 23 people. That's kind of odd. I guess there are some people that are wearing both hats and gloves. And the question is, what's the minimum number doing that? All right, so I'm going to do some scenarios. So the people are wearing just gloves only, there's some people that are wearing gloves and hats, and there's some people wearing hats only. So I'll do like three tables, something like this. So in my going to extremes strategy, I'm going to ask, could this be as small as possible? Could it be no people wearing both hats and gloves? Which means I'm left with all eight people wearing gloves and all 15 people just wearing hats. And I've already asked that question, no, that's impossible. That means I need at least 23 people in the room, not in the case when I'm dealing with 20. So I'm going to just go through and deal with the extremes. Could it be one person wearing both hat and gloves? I guess that leaves seven people wearing gloves just alone and 14 people wearing hats just alone. Is that possible? If it's not, I'll go to the next extreme. I feel like I know how to get to this problem. Maybe this will lead to something useful. If it doesn't, then my assumption that 20 is probably wrong, I'm going to go back and do it all again for 40. And if that's wrong, I'm going to do it all again for 60. Okay, sounds a bit scary but at least I know I have a, a possible a plan of attack for this problem. So go with this. Try playing with the extreme smallest numbers that could possibly fit in the middle here and see if an answer pops out for you or not. And if it doesn't, then I'll have to go to another problem solving strategy, I guess. Have a look at the essay. Play with this and, and see, what, see what you do, how it compares with what I do. All right, thanks so much. Thanks for watching. For more curriculum inspirations material, go to our website. Lots of great stuff there.